you want to use diagnostic descriptions in Canoo and don't know how, then this video is for you. Hello, my name is Michael Webler and I am responsible for the diagnostic features in Canoo and Canalyzer. Using Canoo, you can test diagnostics features in your ECU in many ways. Indirectively, semi-automated or fully automated. But for all of these tests, you need to configure diagnostics correctly. In the next few minutes, we will have a closer look at how to do this in Canoo. In the ribbon Diagnostics and XCP, select Diagnostic ISOTP. Depending on your configuration and available options, you will see the available networks under Diagnostic Access. To configure a diagnostic description, just select the network to which your ECU is connected and then add Diagnostic Description. There are basically three main options. You can add a basic diagnostic description for UDS or Keyword Protocol 2000, a standard diagnostic description or a diagnostic description file. So what are the differences? Basic diagnostic descriptions can be customized in the corresponding editor of Canoo. But as the basic in the name implies, they offer basic features. That means they only support diagnostic requests and responses with static sizes. Therefore, only the diagnostics console is supported for them. That's also why we do not recommend this kind of diagnostic description as the main source for your service definitions. However, sometimes it can be helpful to add some custom services to a diagnostic description that you're not allowed to change. Then you can add them as additional description, as we will see later. Then there are standard diagnostic descriptions. They are coming with Canoo and contain the services of the UDS, UDS for LIN or the Keyword Protocol 2000 standard in a very generic way and include a fault memory model. As they are generic, they do not contain any ECU-specific services and the parameters in the diagnostic response are not interpreted in detail. Therefore, we recommend this type of diagnostic description only if you do not have a diagnostic description file and only want to perform some very basic tasks. For example, bringing an ECU into a specific session state. Finally, with a diagnostic description file, you can use the whole diagnostics feature set of Canoo. The feature variant coding is only available with diagnostic description files. Therefore, of course, we recommend using CDD, PDX or MDX files. The configuration is done in the same way for all diagnostic description types. For CAN, you just need to select the file and you're good to go. By default, its usage is Diagnostics Tester with physical requests. If you additionally want to simulate the diagnostics functionality of an ECU using the built-in diagnostic channel, you need to check Simulation by and select the corresponding simulation node. To send requests functionally as a kind of broadcast to all ECUs, you need to select Functional or Group Requests for the tester. Note that in this case you will not be able to evaluate the responses as they are sent physically. In order to do this, you additionally need a diagnostic description configured for physical requests for each ECU under test. Eventually, you need to select a different variant or a different diagnostic interface. For each network type, there are generated diagnostic interfaces indicated by this generated prefix. This way, you can use the diagnostic description on any network type, even if it does not contain an interface for it. But in most cases, you should use an interface defined in the diagnostic description for the respective network type here, CAN. If you're working with several ECUs using the same diagnostic description, Canoo will modify the ECU qualifier because it needs to be unique. If the diagnostic descriptions are set up correctly, there should be no address collisions. However, if you add a diagnostic description several times using the same interface, there will be collisions which you need to resolve manually. Collisions are displayed in the dialog as red X. In this case, we need to make the CAN identifiers unique for each ECU. Maybe you need to check override manually first to be able to modify the settings. For providing security access, especially for older ECUs, 
you will sometimes need to go to the page diagnostic layer to add a seed and key DLL which computes the key for unlocking the ECU. If you want to extend an already configured description with further services, you can do so on the page additional descriptions. I am using a basic diagnostics description for this here. The additional description inherits the communication parameters of the master description. By drag and drop, you can configure the priority of the service definition for interpretation if the same service should exist with different interpretations in both descriptions. Once you have specified the services and their request and response parameters in the basic diagnostics editor and pressed commit, you can export the settings and re-import them, for example, into another canoe configuration, like so. For Lin and Flexray, you need to configure a database first. That means, in case of Lin, an LDF file, and in case of Flexray, a Firebox or Autosar XML. For Lin, most of the communication parameters, like the network address, NAD, are taken from the LDF instead of the diagnostic description. For Lin and Flexray, you additionally need to specify the database node for which you added the diagnostic description. For Flexray, make sure that the slot or PDU assignments are done correctly and that the Flexray TP observer is activated. For Ethernet networks, I already made a video series on diagnostics over IP and how to configure it. I added the link in the description. Finally, it's always a good idea to check the help. Just press F1, click on Diagnostics and then Diagnostics ISOTP configuration. There you will find a lot of information on this topic. That's all for the start. In the next videos, we will look at the configuration of the diagnostic window and use the diagnostics features of Canoo for interactive testing. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, give us a like, subscribe to the Vector Tech Tutorial channel and have a look at our other diagnostics videos. Let's configure the diagnostic window next.